Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to the Fly-by-Wire Airbus A380 tutorial. These tutorials are going to be based on the actual Airbus A380 FCOM. However, I'm not an A380 type rated pilot. For this reason, some smaller inaccuracies may exist. All right, let's go right into it. We are going to fly the ASEANA Airbus A380 from Seoul over to Osaka, which is a one hour and 15 minutes flight that's been operated on the real Airbus A380 this year. Now, let's go ahead and go right into the cockpit where we are going to start with our basic Airbus cockpit setup. And this always starts with a preliminary cockpit preparation, which checks that the aircraft is safe to be powered up. So we make sure that the engine master switches are all in the off position. The engine start selector is in the norm position. The landing gear lever is down and the wiper selectors are both off. When that is done, we can go ahead and start the aircraft up. Now, the start procedure itself depends whether we have external power or the APU available. However, since this is an A380, we can assume that in 99% of the cases, external power will be available. So this is what we're using for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and turn all four batteries on. And this applies basic power to the aircraft. From here on, we can go ahead and turn on the external power and we can turn on all four of them. Now, this starts the general power up of the aircraft. You can see the screens are going through self-tests and from here the aircraft just needs a little while to completely power up. We can make use of that time to set the cockpit lights as needed. And you will find the cockpit lights mostly located down here on the pedestal. Now, I recommend to keep the intake lights on. Those are the background lights that control all the um, switches, which really improve the visibility, especially across the overhead panel. Next to that, we've got our main panel flop lights, which are those lights you can see down here, which I would turn off unless it is night. And then we've got the pedestal floodlight, which controls a floodlight just shining onto here. And then we've got the ambient light, and that one is what most of you will be familiar with as the floodlight or the dome light. So the ambient light during daylight is of course not needed, so we can turn those off. Next up we are going to tune our display brightness, which we can find up here for the primary flight display, the navigation display, and the multifunction display, which is the panel that you have your FMS on. Now, then we also have the two ECAM screens, and those are the engine warning display, which is the upper one, and the system display, which is the lower one, and again, the same on the first officer's side. Now, when our displays are set, we are going to move up to the overhead panel, and next up, we are going to set our ADIRS into the nav position. And we do this with number one, number two, and then number three. Always use them in that sequence so that you get the right habit and if you ever happen to end up in a non-normal you don't accidentally confuse number two and three. So number one is what powers the captain's instrument is on the left side, number two first officer's instruments on the right side, number three back up in the middle. Alright, next we are going to do the engine and APU fire test. So we press the test button and we can observe that all of them are working and we get the audio alert and we would have the ECAM alerts as well. When that is done, we can start the APU. So APU master switch goes to on and the APU start selector goes to on. And with that, the APU start is in progress. Once the APU has started, we are going to turn on the APU bleed. And with that, we have completed the basic power up. Our aircraft is air conditioned and then we can go ahead and start with the actual preliminary preparation. So we are just going to wait until the APU has completed its startup over here. And once that is the case, we will continue with our cockpit preparation. So, or rather with our preliminary cockpit preparation. Okay, so the APU is almost there. There is no delay. Or there is no need to delay the selection of APU bleed. You can turn it on straight away once the APU avail light is showing. So avail shows on the APU page or you can just check it up here on the ECAM as well. And with APU avail 
we can select the APU bleed. Now Airbus recommends not to have any passengers aboard for 20 minutes or longer without APU bleed operatives. So I would consider it pretty much standard operations to have the APU running and supplying bleed at pretty much any given time. Okay, when that is done, we can move on to our electronic flight bag and do the initial setup of the EFB. So let's go ahead and start it up. We make sure that our SimBrief pilot ID is entered and then we can import our SimBrief flight plan. Now, when that is done, we need to decide on the amount of fuel to carry. Let's go ahead and select the second icon, the dispatch icon, so that we get our flight plan. In order to determine the amount of fuel to carry on an aircraft like this, which mostly flies long-haul flights, first of all we are going to check the en route charts to verify if there is any significant weather en route, but there is not today. And then we can check our airport's weather conditions. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at the weather conditions for our departure airport, Seoul Incheon, Cavo K, and the weather stays Cavo K in the forecast. For our destination, Osaka, and we can see we've got a northerly wind with a couple of clouds, but nothing significant, and there is generally good weather conditions. Now, for our alternates, we can see that the first alternate, Kochi, over here has good weather as well, so there is nothing to uh, worry about. We don't need to take any extra fuel. So, looking into the flight plan itself, we can see that we've got a plan takeoff fuel of 22 tons plus 800 kilos of taxi fuel. I'm going to add a little bit extra because in the tutorial doing explanations, we always take a little bit longer, so if the standard is 23 tons, I'm going to make it 24, so that we have a little bit of extra time for explanations. In general, if you're wondering how much extra time you can gain by adding extra fuel, I recommend to have a look at the final reserve figure over here, which gives you a good idea. So 30 minutes extra are 4200 kilos under the given conditions. In other words, if you say you want, for example, 15 minutes extra, you can take some 2100 kilos extra, and that gives you a rough idea of the amount of fuel to take. So, with that out of the way, we can load up 24 tons. So let's go onto the ground page down here, and by default, the SimBrief data will already be imported. Now, you can choose if you want to do the boarding in either instantly, in a fast time or in a real time, but be aware that real time boarding does take a long time on the A380. So you can see 40 minutes down here. So we are going to be using instant today. So hit instant, hit the begin boarding button, and with that our aircraft is boarded. Next up we are going to go to the fuel page and we can enter the fuel quantity we want down here. And we said that we want 24 tons of fuel today. Again, you can choose between instant, fast or real, but just be aware, real-time refueling in an aircraft that can take over 200 tons is going to take a while. Alright, so 24 tons for us and we are going to use instant refueling over here and that completes the refueling process of our aircraft. Next up we can go ahead and prepare our charts. So we find those down here in the navigation and charts tab. If we hit the from button then we get our charts for Seoul. Now, for the A380, you should always check if there are any dedicated charts. So if you go into the taxi tab, which is where we also find the general charts, then you will, for example, see that for the Airbus A380, we do find a couple of dedicated charts down here in the list. That is provided I didn't miss them. So. Let's see where they are. They are here, I do know that. Here they are, special notice to A380 and 747-8 operators. And those are always some charts you should have a look into because they contain important information such as which taxiways may not be suitable for the aircraft or which parking stands may be suitable for the aircraft or in some cases even some dedicated charts. So over here we can see which um, 
taxiways are usable or which taxiways may not be usable. Likewise, which gates may or may not be usable for our aircraft. So very useful stuff. So let's go ahead and make a general decision on the amount on the um, charts that we want. Now I'd say this one is actually a fairly good taxi chart. So I am going to pin that one as a taxi chart. So, here it is, special notice to A380 and 747 operators, I'm going to pin that one, and then we need our standard instrument departure as well, and as we can see on the flight plan itself, we've got the Egoba to Yankee departure today. So let's go ahead and select the Egoba to Yankee, and pin that one for later reference as well. So, pin charts are easily available through the um, dashboard. Down here on the pin charts menu, you have quick access to all the charts you may need. The last thing we got to do is the preliminary performance um, calculation. And unfortunately, we don't have a performance calculator in the Flyby Wire Airbus at the moment. So what we can do is we go to Simbrief and we can use our takeoff performance calculator over here. So let's go ahead and hit that. Now we did take a little bit extra fuel, so let's make sure to update the weight. I'm going to go with 374 tons over here. And likewise you could enter any uh, runway shortening. Be sure to ex actually select that in the menu up here if you go by a shortening. For example, if you may take a little bit longer to line the aircraft up, we may shorten it by 100 meters over here. Likewise, we can make our flap selections. Um, we can choose if we want to depart with um, toga or flags. We can choose if we want our bleeds, auto or off, and the anti-ice as well. Likewise, the weather can be inserted down here. And once we're done, we hit calculate. And this gives us a couple results. So what are we looking for on the takeoff performance results down here? Mostly we're interested in the stop margin. So in this case, our stop margin is 738 meters. And that is a fairly long margin. Always remember, if you're using a flex temperature, you also have the so-called TAS effect, which provides an even greater stop margin. Now, the other thing we're interested in, of course, is our takeoff speeds and, in general, the maximum weight that we can take out. And that is what we have down here. So, in this case, our limiting weight is 510 tons, which happens to be the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft. So, 510 is what we can take out. And the actual limitation that's causing this, in our case, is the maximum certified takeoff weight. But there may be different limitations, such as runway limitations, climb limitations, and in those cases you can do different calculations to increase the takeoff weight, but we'll just leave it over here for the important thing. You want the stop margin and you want your uh, maximum takeoff weight that you can take off with. Okay, so that is... Okay, so that is our initial um, calculation complete, so let's get rid of Simbrief once again. Now that we've got the EFB prepared, now that we know our initial takeoff performance, we can go ahead with our aircraft. And there is a couple things that we want to check. So first things first, we're going to hit the recall button down here in order to ensure that there is no warning that may have been suppressed previously. Next, we are going to check if there is any MEL item on the aircraft. MEL stands for Minimum Equipment List, and in the flight simulation we should use this section just to think about is there any known issue with our aircraft. For example, we can see our second standby instrument is currently not implemented, and in case of the fly-by-wire A380, the uh, fuel consumption is currently a little bit off from the Simbrief profile. Those are a couple of the things that we should be thinking about at this point. We can continue and review our aircraft configuration summary. And this would be anything that you might deem special from the settings down here. So for example, have you done any special settings to the aircraft? That kind of stuff. Last but not least, with that our aircraft is accepted for service. So we can go ahead and make sure that we have sufficient operating fluids on board now. Now we are going to start this down here on the ECAM door page and you can see that over here we have the oxygen quantities and we basically want to make sure that we've got sufficient oxygen 
in here and there is a table in the AFCOM in general if you have more than a thousand PSI with two or three pilots on board you will be fine. Next up we are going to check the hydraulic quantities so we select hydraulic down here on the ECAM control panel and we verify the quantity levels that we've got over here and over here. In general you want to be sure that the quantity is within the predefined range over here. Now that range may vary dynamically, just make sure that the actual quantity is within that range. From there we continue via the engine page and we need to verify the oil quantity on board. Now you can see by default with the FADAC not powered those numbers are axed out. You can manually turn the FADAX on on the aft overhead panel and those are the switches we have located over here. FADAC ground power. So let's go ahead and turn all of them on for every engine. And now you can see those values are turning green and we can check the oil quantity on board. Now the present version of the Fly-by-Wire A380 does have an issue where there is zero oil quantity indicated. In the real world obviously you would make sure that you have sufficient quantity there. Now the question is of course what is a sufficient engine oil quantity? The minimum is 6 quarts plus the estimated consumption for the intended flight and the average estimated consumption is 0.4 quarts per hour but no lower than 10 quarts. So for example for our flight which is scheduled at let's say an hour and 30 we would need 6 quarts plus 0.4 per hour so 0.6 for an hour 30 flight so 6.6 6 would be the minimum but remember no lower than 10 so we would expect to see 10 over here on the uh, oil quantities all right when that check is complete we can turn the engine um, fader ground power off again and be sure to close those guards once again when that is done there is only um, a few checks remaining. First of all we make sure that the speed brake lever is in the retracted position and we verify that the speed brakes are actually retracted up here and then we check the same for the flaps. So you can see our flaps are retracted and the flap lever is indeed in the zero position. Last but not least we are going to check the park and brake and we do that by releasing the brake checking the triple indicator to make sure that we've got zero brake pressure showing then we apply our brakes manually and you can see that the brake pressure increases, the accumulator pressure decreases and when that check is complete then we can set our parking brake once again and verify that we do have pressure again. Alright and that basically completes our preliminary cockpit preparation. From here we are going to move into the cockpit preparation which is going to be dedicated its own separate video. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you have learned something today. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comments below and the next tutorial in the series is going to come very shortly. Thank you very much for watching, as always be sure to like, comment and subscribe and if you really love what I'm doing on this channel I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much and see you all again on the next one.